there hasn't been a new asset class created since the bond market in 1693. Now there's a new one. It's called the digital asset space. Question, are you participating? Hey, what's going on guys? This is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. What's going on guys? Happy Monday to you. Good morning. Another exciting day in this new asset class that is the digital asset space, guys. Listen, I got a really great article I want to share with you guys this morning because I think it's important, again, for us on this channel. We talk about three things when it comes time to talk about leveling up. One is to level up our XRP IQ. We have to know that we know that we know what we hold. Number two is to level up our digital asset space IQ, right? Because this is a whole complete new asset class. What is the new XRP? What's going on in the digital asset space? What's going on with B-Chain, Hollow Chain, and Herdera Hashcraft, right? It's important to level up our IQ on the overall digital asset space. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, is to have a better overall, overall idea on our financial uh, space IQ as well. Part of that is knowing what's going on geopolitically and the events around there. So this is an interesting article from Coindesk and it's titled Money Reimagined as Tech, Politics, and the Beer Cold Collide. A Global Reset Looms. And this, this was updated on uh, April the 10th. Uh, now, somewhere in here, I believe um, um, Christian Giancarlo was in here. Maybe this was a reference to something that he said. So let's check it out. Money is a shared fiction. Our mechanism for storing and exchanging agreed upon units of value. A tool so powerful that wars are fought over it. Springs entirely from our collective imagination. Some might find that unnerving the age-old desire to attach a currency's value to something earthly, precious, and finite is, per is partly founded on a false hope that these tokens in which we place such faith have intrinsic value. It's an understandable instinct, and there's a strong gold standard argument for, for curtailing the sovereign's power to debase people's savings but the sense of innate value is just a belief, as with people's beliefs and other e e ephemeral concepts. In religion, for example, or in the concept of a nation, the ones most difficult to challenge are those fundamental to society. Indeed, one could argue that if everyone were to acknowledge that money is a fiction, it would cease to function. You're reading money, we imagined a weekly look at the techn technological, economic, and social events and trends that are redefining our relationship with money and transforming the global financial system. You can subscribe to this and all of CoinDesk newsletters here. Okay, so the imaginary nature of money is not a weakness. However, it's a strength. As Israeli historian Yuval Harari, author of the Sebano Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, explains, our capacity to conceive and commonly believe in stories is the primary reason why we humans rule the earth instead of, say, the chimpanzees. It's what enabled us to organize into communities and ultimately to build civilizations. The modern world is a direct outcome of our capacity not just to imagine, but to imagine together. Now, as a terrifying pandemic forces a retreat from globalization and challenges the foundations of the international capitalist order, society could be in for one of its periodic narrative shifts, a sweeping reimagining of its core tenets. Our idea of money, which Harari describes as the most successful story ever invented, and told by humans could experience the most significant transformation of all. And this is apparently Harari here on stage uh, doing a TED talk, it looks like. Yep. And it, why humans rule the run the world. Interesting. So our money 
I have an answer for that. So our money narrative was already gearing up for a new account, for a new act rather, even before an omnipresent antagonist called the beer coal was added to the cast of characters. That's exactly right. So this is a very important sentence there. Our money narrative was already gearing up for a new act, even before the omnipresent antagonist called the beer code was added to the cast of characters. <clears throat> right? So that's because an intense competition was underway to establish a programmable standard for digital currencies. This radical new model will replace banknotes with what author David Birch calls e-cash and enable software commands within a device-driven peer-to-peer system of value exchange that bypasses gatekeeping banks. The race was kickstarted by the invention of Bitcoin 11 years ago. It now involves thousands of competitors. To start with, we users, individuals, businesses, and governments will be offered a much wider choice as the world moves towards a multipolar, multi-currency structure. Nonetheless, there will be fierce competition to establish dominant standards across multiple alternatives. It's a diverse field encompassing decentralized standalone currencies such as Bitcoin, decentralized algorithmically managed, I'll say that three times, stable coins such as DAI, and reserved fat stable coins built on open permissionless blockchains such as Circle and Coinbase, Paxos, and Tether. New privately defined stable, coin, stable coins built on permissioned blockchains such as Facebook's Libra, and last but not least, central bank digital currencies such as China's central digital currency electronic payment system, the DCEP. The stakes of this battle are high. On the line are the balance of geopolitical power, the public versus private boundaries of our economies, and the value we place on transactional privacy. The pandemic, otherwise known on this channel as the beer cold, has given this all in gain even more urgency as central banks flood the world with monetary stimulus, setting the stage for a familiar currency war in which currencies weaponize foreign exchange depreciation to give the industries an advantage over others. The dollar-centric international monetary system will come under stress. The Federal Reserve could not indefinitely be the world's lender of last resort for everything and everyone, not without undermining its independence and threatening global confidence in American leadership. Perhaps the Donalds, President Donald Trump's biggest fear. Meanwhile, the fallout from the crisis and the response to it have highlighted use cases for digital currencies that weren't previously on people's radar. Who would have thought, even as recently as February, that a digital dollar proposal would make its way into a March congressional bill? Who would have thought? As lawmakers grappled with how to get relief money directly and quickly in, into American hands. Meanwhile, fears over beer coal contagion appear to have accelerated the case for cashlessness as warnings rise over germy money and countries go so far as to burn or disinfect banknotes. So yes, a reimagining is coming, hence the choice of title for this brand new newsletter. Um, tell me about this Bitcoin thing, right? And so we all understand it. Listen, Bitcoin has first moves advantage. It was first in March a place to introduce blockchain 
technology, distributed ledger technology to the masses, to the world, right? So it referenced that, but we all understand that there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of digital assets out there, right? So in this section, we'll employ data visualizations to, um, to explore how money is being reimagined. What better place to start with with Coindesk? own metric on the content journey people take to understand cryptocurrency. In this case, we will we were interested to know whether despite Bitcoin's sharp sell-off during the first beer cold hit to financial markets, people are seeking to learn more about it in these uncertain times. So we queried Google Analytics and page views for our Bitcoin one old page. The result, this past Wednesday, the page reached its highest daily view number since Coindesk.com new site was launched in mid-November. Here's its activity since March 1st. So just understand that people were initially, they'll look at Bitcoin and after they continue to look and they continue to look and they look at number two and they look at the number three and they look at number four on livecoinwatch.com, they will begin to understand Number one, the big, the better bang for your dollar is certainly not going to be at seven thousand dollars per one bitcoin. And then they'll look into. Hopefully, they'll begin to do more and more research. They'll click on a particular asset like XRP, for example, and they'll learn about Ripple Inc. technologies in San Francisco. They'll learn about the consensus protocol. They'll learn about the ILP and the XRPL ledger, and they'll realize that there are superior technologies that other than what Bitcoin offers. It'll take some time. Initially, again, they'll look at Bitcoin. That's the first thing they hear. But over a period of time, they'll look into other digital assets. They'll learn more about Cardano. They'll learn more about EOS. They'll learn more about Litecoin. They'll learn more about you know, some of these things, perhaps not in the top 100 yet, that might think that they believe might even give them an even bigger bang for their buck, right? And then they'll eventually learn and come to the conclusion that if the digital asset doesn't have real world use case, real world use case, it's not going to make it. Bitcoin is going to survive for a period of time because it was first and the, uh, the ultra super rich have determined that there's value there the same way that the ultra super rich have determined that there's value in a painting that no one can understand. Right. Same type of deal. So these data signals are preliminary, but along with late March spike in visits to Nick Studios 24, 2014, Coindesk piece entitled Still Don't Get Bitcoin. Here's an explanation even a five-year-old would understand. Okay, so they got an article linked to that. They hint that the chaos of the pandemic is reviving interest in crypto among Coindesk discovery audience. This is nothing like the newcomer visits we saw during the 2017 crypto bu bubble. Very important. So this new interest in the digital asset space is, in, in essence, greater than it was in 2017, where everyone was going crazy because 17,000 millionaires came out from BTC. So so far, greed rather than fear seems the big seems uh, seems the bigger driver of mainstream curiosity. Yeah. But while it's painful to think large-scale adoption hinges on an event as horrible as this, perhaps people are, are this time motivated by deeper, more lasting interests, right? Maybe, they're, maybe they are asking about decentralized governance, data integrity, privacy, and whether Bitcoin is truly digital gold, not simply how do I make a quick buck. And this is where we all hope that the masses Come, come, you know, come to in conclusion. We hope that they're elevating past that quick buck and they're moving into really checking out the digital asset space and its whole, looking at everything. These are great examples. Decentralized governance, data integrity, there's digital assets out there that provides that. And that's their, that is their strong point, data integrity. Privacy, this, right? There's a bunch of privacy coins out there, right? So it's just really, really important stuff. And we're hoping that they get past the quick buck thing and move into really learning this technology that they in fact level up the digital asset space IQ. So reimagining money is a collective exercise. There is no single author to the narrative. So this newsletter will, will necessarily incorporate other voices. That here's an unscientific survey of relevant stories and ideas. 
the global town hall. So let me see if I want to read that. Yeah, I'll read it. The global town hall. What makes a difference? What a difference a year makes. The Switzerland-based Bank for International Settlements, which provides banking services to central banks, the BIS, right, and issues research reports and policy recommendations, has gone from dismissing CBDCs as pointless to all-out advocacy. <laughs> we all remember, right, in this channel, we all remember when Augustine Karstens was sitting in, in the same room with our champion, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, and its digital asset, XRP, right? And, you know, what, a week before that, he was, nah, 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 digital asset, nah, nah, nah. And then the next thing you know, he was a proponent out there preaching for the digital asset space, right? Remember when the former head of the IMF, Madame Lagarde, walked Brad Garlinghouse into this meeting of, of I don't know how many, 30 central banks? Things seem to happen. Uh, so his attitude changed. And I wonder what made him change, right? In March last year, BIS Chief Augustine Carson said central banks were not seeing the value in the technology. But in August, notably following digital currency announcements from Facebook's Libra and the People's Bank of China, he said CDBCs would be coming sooner than we think. At that time, the BIS formed its innovation hub and five months later named Bono Kure, a former heavy hitter on the European Central Bank's executive board, as its leader. Come January, it released a survey of 66 central banks, finding that 80% were studying digital currency and 10% were close to issuing them. Now, per April 3rd bulletin, BIS researchers have pronounced that people's changing relationship with cash <laughs> with the beer cold pandemic would further accelerate the rollout. How to explain a century in the making money shift to your grandmother? Well, conveying this complex concept to the world at large requires combining big scholarly thinking and uh, with accessible, easy to digest content. So it's pleasing to see the conversation diving into this topic. Backed by an international alliance of universities, the site lives up to its academic rigor, journalistic flair tagline. A December 12 piece entitled, When China and Other Big Countries Launch Cryptocurrencies, It Will Kick Off a Global Revolution. All right, remains highly re relevant and readable even though it preceded beer cold. Its author, Liang Zhao of Lund University writes, while technological change has uh, been incredibly fast in the information era, the system of international payments has lagged behind. But once sovereign digital currencies start taking off, this will suddenly change, just like smartphones quickly, quickly eliminated most old cell phones. No countries will be able to reject blockchain payments for long. How will the world's 1.7 billion unbanked fare during beer cold lockdowns? Now that virtually all commerce has moved online, people without access to bank accounts are especially vulnerable. As Aaron Klein of the Brookings Institution notes, there's a big problem for the beer cold economy. The internet doesn't take cash. The challenge is not just in Africa, Latin America, or Asia. It's in the United States, where one in 14 households are without a bank account. Whoa. According to the FDIC, such families use prepay cards, which charge high transaction and balance checking fees, and require them to preposition funds, whereas those of us with credit cards don't have to. With millions suddenly thrust into unemployment and already struggling to get access to food, the cost of an outdated pre-digital world of finance are about to become even more burdensome for the poor. It's for them that this revolution must be fought. The currency cold war, cash and cryptography, hash rates, and hegemony, hegemony, 
slated for release in May. This is the title of a book. This book is about as timely as one can get. David Birch, a prolific author and topics on topics of, of money and identity, and a consultant and prominent speaker of the FinTech circuit, has delivered a detailed, rich analysis of the global competition to define electro electronic money and what it means for our lives. Disclosure, I wrote the books forward. Okay, there you go. So he wrote the forward for, the, for David Birch's book. Cool. Outlining the convergence of cryptography, smartphone technology, identity authentication tools, and digital assets. The currency cold war is an indispensable guide to the future of money. By the way, Dave will discuss these topics during our consensus distributed virtual event on Monday, May 11th. How about that? A couple of plugs there from Coinbase, from Coindesk. When he'll join other lead, leading thinkers in a special live cast, Money Reimagine, online sessions that I will host. So good for you. Good, good write up there, my friend. Very good article here. Um, who's the author? Michael J. Casey, contributing author here for Coindesk. And um, obviously, he wrote the forward for that new book. Looking forward to checking out that book by David Birch as well. My right, guys, the Global Reset, we all we talk about it on the channel all this time. The vehicle, it's just an excuse. It's a way, it's an avenue for them to um, inject this new quantum financial system. We all know it's coming. But understand this, you because you and I know we've been in this asset space now for three plus years, on four years now, four years now. Just because you and I know, right? People in the digital asset space, early adopters in this new asset class, those of us who are in the XRP community, you know, being having access to great content creators and just just a great community as a whole that allows us to be two and three and four steps ahead doesn't mean that the masses even have an idea that a global reset is, is upon us. They don't know. They don't understand. And it's important for us to get that. It really is important for us to get that and to understand how blessed we are to be playing a game that 99.9% .9 of the masses don't even know is being played. And by the way, we're winning. All right, guys, listen, I am going to wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in, where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.